I'm joined by John Cassidy. He's an earthquake seismologist with Natural Resources Canada, and he joins me from Victoria, B.C. John, thanks so much for being with us this afternoon. Tell us a bit more about the size and the intensity of this earthquake. Uh, sure. This was uh, obviously a huge earthquake, a very, very sad event. Uh, th this was uh, at 7.8, one of the largest earthquakes in that region um, in nearly a century. And it's ruptured a fault that was likely 300 to 400 kilometers long. So when you get these really large earthquakes like this, you're talking about strong shaking over a very long region. The entire fault zone would have been uh, experiencing very severe shaking, about 15 million people in that region, so densely populated, uh, who would have experienced that strong shaking. Uh, shaking that continues for more than a minute, uh, as was mentioned. So for these large earthquakes, um, it's it's a, and shallow earthquakes, that's, that's a key point. Um, strong shaking for a long time, and then followed by hundreds, if not thousands of aftershocks that are uh, can damage already weakened buildings, so it's um, you know it's a it's a worst case scenario when you have an earthquake of that size in a very densely populated region. Talk to us about what that number means and and that length you said of the earth of the earthquake when people hear you know a seven point eight. What does that really mean? Yeah, so it 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 goes up uh, in ter in terms of a magnet one magnitude unit. If you go from a, a 3.8 or magnitude 4, like it was experienced near uh, Buffalo uh, early this morning, if you go from a 4 to a 5, the ground shaking is 10 times stronger. If you go from a 4 to a 6, it's 100 times stronger. Uh, in terms of energy release, um, a magnitude 6 would release 1,000 times more energy than a magnitude 4. So it goes up really quickly. Uh, both the strength of shaking, the area impacted, and the duration of shaking. So those are the three key factors, and those are all the factors that uh, contribute to damage to buildings and infrastructure as well, the duration of shaking, the strength of shaking. Right, and as you mentioned, uh, we heard a gentleman in Danielle's story there say that it felt like it was, you know, shaking for almost two minutes. Can you talk to us about the particular uh, area, the region? Was this expected? Uh, it's an area, uh, most of Turkey actually experiences uh, strong earthquakes. This is one of the largest, uh, well, the largest since 1939. So there have been large earthquakes in the past in this same area. There's a major fault called the East Antolian uh, Fault that runs through the area. There's another major fault in northern Turkey that has experienced many large earthquakes over the years. Uh, so. It's a region that's very prone to earthquakes. We've seen large earthquakes in the past, and, and there'll be more, unfortunately, um, caused by the plate tectonics but, uh, of this region. It's a very complicated setting uh, with Africa moving to the north very slowly, the Arabian Peninsula rotating into the region. So the, the act of plate tectonics um, is ultimately what causes these large earthquakes through, throughout Turkey and northern Syria. John, I just have time for one quick question here. Two of them, you know, just hours apart into the 7 range, 7.8, 7.5. Was that surprising to you? How rare is that? Yeah, that is um, relatively rare. So a 7.8 earthquake, uh, tip, the typical pattern for aftershocks would be the largest aftershock would be about one magnitude unit smaller, so 6.8. So 7.5 is, is much, much larger than, a, than, than would be expected. Uh, it may, this 7.5 may be on a different fault. It may be a separate earthquake on its own that will, that will take a little bit of time to sort out. Uh, it was about 100 kilometers away from, from last night's earthquake. Um, so it'll take a while to sort out, but it could be a separate fault system and a separate earthquake that was triggered by uh, last night's event. John Cassidy, Earthquake Seismologist with Natural Resources Canada. Thank you so much, John, for helping Most us welcome. to understand this.